This episode, as with all episodes, exists thanks to the supporters of the show who contribute a mere $3 per month via patreon.com slash copytradersclub. Thanks for listening, and thanks for your support. Copy Traders Club, where you can learn how to make better decisions and more money copy trading. I'm Gavin McCauley, my name and username on eToro. Today, we talk to one of the newest stars of the PI program, who is basking in the light of a wonderful rise in 2022. Adelante! Season 2, episode 37 of the Copy Traders Club podcast, and as always, my aim as an eToro enthusiast is to demystify this new and uncharted world of copy trading, understand what are the pitfalls and best practices, and how ultimately to succeed as a copy trader. In chats like today's, the aim is to answer all your questions about this popular investor, and reveal more about them than anywhere else so you can assess whether they might suit you. In this episode, we talk to José Ángel Zabalegui Labarta, a.k.a. Análisis Cíclico. Bienvenidos a los nuevos oyentes que hablan español. Espero que puedan entender la conversación de hoy. The limousine carrying José has arrived at the Copy Traders Clubhouse. José, hola, bienvenidos al Copy Traders Club. <laughs> Bien hallado. Good to be here. Well, it's great to have you here, and it'll be even more great to get you past security and into the VIP lounge. So, a series of quick fire questions. Ready? Okay. Go ahead. Username on eToro. Analysis cyclical. Date you joined eToro. I think it was December 2017. Date you became a popular investor. I think also it was March 2018. Year of birth? 1968. I'm 54 right now. Place of residence? Part-time in Madrid and part-time in my country house in the center of Spain. Profession? I could say economist, entrepreneur, and trader. Mostly trader. Briefly state what you aim to achieve on eToro. To merge my two passions, the entrepreneurship and my passion about markets. Name one of your investing heroes. Oh, of course, Jim M. Hurst. Name one of your favorite investing books. The Profit Magic of Stocks Transaction Timing. That completes the formalities. Let's proceed now into the VIP section. The splendid copy traders lounge awaits you. José Ángel Zabalegui Labarta, a.k.a. Analysis Cíclico. Are you ready for this magical transition? Ready. Okay, Jose, come on into the lounge here. You take a seat. Can I get you a little drink, a little glass of Rioja, perhaps? No, I prefer water. <laughs> we are still in the morning. <laughs> but later on, who knows? Okay. So, Jose, you're from Spain, as, as I believe everybody knows, originally from the Pais Vasco, San Sebastian. Yes, that's right. Beautiful place. I've had a previous guest on the show many times now, Robert Merck, my fellow mm -hmm. Irishman, popular investor. He's in Bilbao. Okay. Just along the Ape Ocho from San Sebastian. Mm hmm <laughs> So is Euskera your first language? No, not at all. My first language is uh, Spanish. But when I left, the Basque country, it was around 1982. 
and it was the beginning of the uh, you know the to normalize that uh, euskera was at schools because previously there weren't the it was uh, not possible to 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 learn euskera because you know the you know the dictatorship uh, from franco and so on it was not allowed in the basque country so when it started i i i went out of the basque country and i came to madrid so at the end i know some sentences words but i do not understand euskera sorry <laughs> Well, I looked up how I could say welcome to Copy Traders Club in Euskera, and it appears to be Ongi Itorira Copy Traders Club. Ongi Itori. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. And Itori looks remarkably like Itoro. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, Google Translate tells me that Itoro in the Basque language means I will come. Ah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's what you're saying every time you say Itoro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So analysis cyclical or analysis cyclical, as you would say, with the theta. I don't know why that is particularly difficult for anglophones to say or to recognize what your name is. I mean if you can say cyclical analysis, you can say analysis cyclical. Right? Yes. But I think it's because in eToro it's written in one word, maybe that makes it look visually confusing. Yes, it's a little bit confusing, I know it. But uh, when I started uh, to think about a username, I decided to go to Analysis Cyclical because of two, two ideas. Because the first one was to, you know, eToro was mainly Anglo speaking word. You know? So I decided to, you know, to take a, a wink to the to the to, to the Spanish uh, speaking language uh, countries, you know. So I decided to to start to speak in Spanish in in Itoro and to use a, a Spanish uh, username, and also because I do cyclical analysis, so it was fair to do so. Perhaps uh, I needed to use, you know, some separation analysis cyclical, and not to to use this long word, difficult to say. But at the end, that's the reality. Well, let's talk about those two things. You say it's a wink towards the whole Latin American universe that exists within eToro, uh, which got me wondering: how big is that Latin American world in eToro? Considering the name eToro is Spanish too. Yes, yes. Perhaps there is an enormous market. So I did a sweep through the search feature to see what countries did indeed show eToro users in mm -hmm. Latin America. And there were indeed users in Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras. Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. So, <laughs> quite a lot. Yes. Interestingly, almost all the results showed that the most copied person in each country only has a very small number of copiers, like between 1 and 20 or so. The exception to that being Mexico. Javier Rotian, he has 4,500 copiers. Mm -hmm. So he's another... Estrella in Ascenso, like you, Jose. Ah, okay. okay, perfect, understood. Uh, so just to complete the results of my Latin American search, no user showed up in Panama, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and Las Malvinas, que son Argentinas, by the way. Amazing. <laughs> I didn't know all of that countries. I think that the, the Spanish community has uh, has to to grow in in the coming in the coming years in in the Toro community i think that there are still room for growth in that community so since the beginning i, I was thinking in this this wing to the spanish people spanish speaking people 
And uh, what are eToro doing specifically to appeal to Spanish speakers? I see they've translated a few of the cheesy YouTube videos into Spanish. Yes, uh, this is a tricky thing because uh, when you do some contents, uh, you know, you, you have to decide if you want to do it in English or, or in Spanish and then to translate them uh, into one or another. The big issue for me is that I, I speak English, but I'm not, uh, you know, a bilingual uh, person. So uh, when you speak some other language that it is not your native language, uh, to say black or white is very easy, but if you want to, you know, to give some colors in between, it is more difficult. So sure. sometimes, sometimes when I talk to people about trading and this and trading concept has a lot of colors i mean mm. and on a lot of the de small details that can make the difference uh, be between one big concept or another sometimes i feel more comfortable speaking in spanish so sometimes i decide to do it in spanish sometimes i i decide to to do it in in, in english the good thing that Toro has is the, this, uh, you know, tradux, uh, traduction system. So it's it's great for you know writing contents. It's perfect, but when you do some video contents, it's more difficult. Sure. Well, I, I noted that the YouTube advert for eToro, where they say instead of invest like a Steve or a Simon, in the Spanish ones they say invierta como José. Which is handy. Yeah, that <laughs> was amazing, and it was you know it, that's nothing to do with me. I mean, it was just a, you know, a coincidence. No? But I remember that uh, I have the opportunity, and I enjoyed that moment very, very, very nice. I I joined Charlie Salomon and Javier uh, Javier Molina and Luis uh, Luis Ramirez. Uh, uh, we agreed to to do a you know a road show in the north part of Spain. We went to Vitoria, to, we went to Bilbao, to uh, to San Sebastian in order to present uh, each other to final clients. I enjoyed that a lot, and I learned a lot from from these uh, these friends. In each uh, presentation, we started with that video, so it was amazing because this video was talking about Jose. And now uh, we are going to present you Jose. <laughs> so, so it was quite funny, but there is nothing related to me, you know. But at the end, it's a nice coincidence for me. <laughs> well, lots of people are investing like Jose. You were recently crowned a black star. Felicidades. Muchas gracias. I have been working hard following that milestone, let's say. I'm going to say that I'm losing this black star this month, I'm afraid. That's it's not bad. Talking to you and I'm not sad about that. Okay. This is more challenging. And I think uh, people must know that it is not easy to read these these letters. Okay. So the thing is that I have spent five years. Uh, working hard to reach this level and I prefer to do it in this way instead of in 12 months. I think that there is a great responsibility behind a popular investor. Either you are blue, red, green or black. I mean, people are trusting you. So you have to be very, very responsible about that. In my case, uh, because I, I know that uh, nobody is the same, you know, we are different each other, okay? But in my case, I prefer to, to have this long run, facing all the things that arise when you are obtaining this kind of support, the responsibility that you feel. So I prefer to do it in this manner, in a constant, and, you know, a growing curve. When I reached this black star, the next thing that happened was an awful month, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so this is something that is, you know, a mystery, uh, astral, 
uh, you know, situation that say, okay, you are a black star, but you have to keep working and to be serious in what you are doing and not to feel that you are the star, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, and I think that that's, it's very, very dangerous. So uh, I will lose it uh, this month, but I don't care. Uh, I will try to do my best to, to continue growing and trying to learn everything. Okay, let's talk about how I came across you, Jose. You say you've been around for many years, but you sort of appeared suddenly to be everywhere on eToro a while back. You were on the Discover page. Every time I looked at it, eToro gave you a lot of promotion, and that's not a negative. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you were the right person to be promoted at the right time. A serious person with experience in the world of finance, with a few gray hairs making money in a down market, mm. the perfect candidate for promotion. So it's a win-win for you and Toro. Yes, apparently, yes. I mean, and I'm very grateful to, to Etoro to promote me and, and so on. But at the end, you must keep yourself working as, as you are, if you are promoted or not. <laughs> so sometimes this exposure may change you a little bit, may affect you in the way that you are making decisions. Or, for instance, recently I have done some contests regarding to macro situation, and at the end uh, I have been investing in some macro ideas and so on, and it doesn't fit well with my strategy. So I'm very grateful to Echoro to promote me. And at the end, I'm following what I think is the best approach to investing in the coming decades. I would say years, but I would say decades from now. Because something very strange is happening right now. It is very difficult to manage the asset allocation strategies. All asset classes is like uh, going without any kind of relationship. And if so, it is all down. The crisis is, is very different to those that we have been living before. Before, everything was under synchronization. I mean, in 2009, uh, with Lehman Brothers issue and so on, uh, we had everywhere a credit crunch, okay? But it, it was everywhere. But right now, every part of the world has its own na nature of crisis, I mean. Uh, in, in, in the U.S., uh, an overheated economy. In, in China, with real estate potential bubble and um, perhaps a credit crunch. In, here in Europe, we have an offer inflation, you know, monetary issues that are affecting very badly to the euro and to the inflation and so on. So we are living tricky, tricky, tricky moments. So. What I learned when I was in a private bank doing trading was not to do buy and hold and wait results. Uh, we try to, to make results every month. And it doesn't care if the markets go up or down. We, we need to make money every, every month. Okay, we're going to get into that more later in the conversation, Jose. For now, let's Close out this section when I ask you a question from the art of people. Can you give me a number between one and ten, which isn't seven? <laughs> I will say ten. How would your favorite teacher describe you? Perseverant. Say again. Perseverante. How do you say that? Perseverant. Uh, perseverant. Yeah. Your, your favorite teacher is a person of very few words. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite teacher. Okay. Uh, I don't know who is my best teacher. I mean, probably it, uh, it's myself. I'm, I'm sorry to, 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 uh, to say that, but at the end, the best lessons that I have learned uh, has been with my own mistakes. So let's say, that when I do something that has bad results, I try to come back and read again what I did 
in order to to understand why I am obtaining bad results. Do you understand me? So it allowed me to go forward and back all the time like an spiral and try to enter always in a positive you know spiral. Why? Because you are always there are up and downs in your life, but you need to have downs in order to learn and to go for apps. <laughs> All right, Jose, let's turn our attention to your profile on eToro. If I could ask you to read a little bit from your bio, and then we'll discuss some of those elements from the start to where it says, please copy open trades. Directional swing trading strategy in forest market based on the Jim and Hurst cyclic theory and techniques. I define trading as the art of making profits from the investor sentiment fluctuations of any financial market and to boost potential capital gains with a compounding strategy based on an adequate trading frequency and risk management policy. Time horizon of trades is one to three weeks, risk score three with peaks four, 80% copy protection recommended, Minimum copy amount recommended of $500. And yes, please copy open trades. Okay. So let's dig into some of those elements if we can for the listener. Yes, for sure. J.M. Hurst, or as you say in Spanish, J.M. Hurst. Who is this guy? Let me try and explain, and then you can add to it. J.M. Hurst was an American engineer, worked for NASA, who in the 60s and 70s was the first researcher to use the power of the modern computer to investigate cycles in the financial markets based on cycles of human behavior. He's recognized as the father of modern cyclic analysis. Analyzing a market according to Hearst cycles is a combination of science and art. It's a skill that must be learned. Hearst himself stated that analysis was more of an art than a science. Mm -hmm. He applied it to stocks and indeed any set of historical data, including natural ecosystems. I saw you mentioning soil in one of your videos, but I see proponents of it applying it to all sorts of asset classes, precious metals, bonds, crypto, and of course you, Jose, in the world of Forex. So it's a form of technical analysis, right? There's two principal elements based on Hearst's two greatest pieces of work. Computer algorithms relating to his book, as you mentioned in the intro, The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing, and then a pencil and paper analog element based on J.M. Hearst's Cycles course. And to, to describe it most simply, the goal is to identify and analyze patterns of cyclical behavior and project them out into the future. How's that? That's right. Very accurate definition. Now, you studied that course, the second piece of work that I mentioned. Tell us how it impacted you. Was it a eureka moment? No. Uh, listen, I discovered cycles when I was uh, working in a private bank in early 90s. And it was because uh, I was the head of technical analysis in those days in the bonds and futures, uh, treasury bonds here in Spain. And I get a subscription service from some people that were doing cyclical analysis in North America. And it wasn't related to Hearst, but I discovered that there were cycles in financial markets. Let's say that this was the old theory, okay? But uh, 15 years ago, when I decided to come back to trading, I decided to come back to cycles, and I discovered Haas. So 15 years ago, I started to read about him. I firstly read The Profit Magic of Strauss, Transaction Timing, and then I went into the course. The course is huge. I mean, it took to me nine months, more or less, 
to go through it. And the big teacher that I had from Cycle's point of view was David Hickson. He is the creator of Sentient Trader, which is a software that does the this pattern recognition approach. It's a software that makes forward analysis going back from uh, big uh, waves to lesser uh, small waves and um, do some kind of interaction in order to decipher which is the the cyclic model of any market. So I went also into his webinars that was very, very high quality webinars, very specialized webinars. And later on, I started to work with a colleague, an IT programmer, in order to find out how to transcribe the harsh ideas from the profit magic of structure set on timing, which is a mathematical approach, to try to translate that in some piece of software, indicator, or, or whatever. At the end, I found that some guys has already done that, which is the, the guys from Quant Cycles. I met them, you know, five years ago or something like that. So we have been working together. And right now we are here using both uh, softwares and trying to apply the principles. Do you know of any other PI on eToro who uses this approach or is a student of J.M. Hurst? Mm. No, I, I, I don't know. No, no, sorry. I, and nobody told me, con- contacted me about cycles uh, in any moment through eToro. Well, I think it's worth remarking on the fact that you're an open book when it comes to this element of your process. Certain PIs are deliberately vague and secretive about the forms of technical analysis and algorithms that they employ mm-hmm. in an effort, I think, like the Wizard of Oz, to project an air of omnipotent genius to themselves. <laughs> but you very openly credit J.M. Hurst and explain his theories. And I've watched your videos, and you go into great detail as to how you put them into practice. And I would suggest that's a, a strong indicator of honesty on your behalf, you know, in how you present yourself. I, I, I try to, to be very transparent and honest in all spheres of my life. I mean, this is, you know, this is something that I, I'm who I am. I, I mean, I'm not going to do nothing different. No? Once said that, I would say that there is no crystal ball uh, in order to trade markets. I mean, there are many tools. And I have decided to use these tools because I found that these tools fit better with my style and what I think uh, trading is. So I'm very happy to to work with Cycles because it gave me a more stable vision of what to expect. But on top of that, there is a strongest scheme, which is money management, entries and exits, strategy, you have to know what you are going to do with that cycles, but at the end, there are part of the kitchen that I don't show to anybody because I have suffered this in my, in my skin. And uh, right now, I have a clear idea of how to module it myself in order to, to trade in a safe way. For instance, when I have bad months, I rapidly recover the line, okay, the green line again. And I don't go into, you know, what I call the mortal spiral, you know, an account that goes down, 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 and they disappear, you know? So I think that the, uh, that is the most important thing in when investing, that part, and not the way you analyze the markets, I mean. Okay, minimum copy amount, you recommend $500. But you can be copied by the minimum amount of 200, right? I think so. I don't know when, where is the, the, the border, you know, the frontier between a trade is copied or not. Okay. So at the end, I decided to say, you know, 500. 
uh, to be sure that all trails are copied. But I think that, that many people told me that, okay, I have starting with 200, which is the minimum, and the trails were copied. So I think it's, it's okay also with 200. Well, the question you have to ask yourself is this. Will you ever do a trade size that is below 0.5% of your portfolio? That's a tricky sentence. I mean, for instance, uh, when when people ask me if I use leverage or not, I use it because it's, this is a tool. But at the end, you have the same exposure. If you are investing 1,000 per five, that that 500 per, per 10 is the same exposure. Yeah, well... Tell me. Your smallest trade size currently is almost 9%, so you're nowhere near the minimum. So unless you do different types of trading with different assets other than the way you're currently trading with currency pairs, I'm pretty confident you will always be copyable with $200 and above. Ah, okay. That's great. Okay, so you say please copy open trades. That's the other thing. Why is this? Aren't your trades pretty short term? You're more of a sprinter than a marathon runner, you say, in one of your videos. Won't someone who copies without copying open trades quickly be in the same situation as you without the risk exposure of joining a short-term trade halfway through? Okay, my average retention period is around one week. One week to three weeks, I would say. Uh, when I have an open trade, it is because I feel that there is room for a better result. So if I enter a trade and it is momently in red numbers and someone enters to copy me, I would say, please, copy open trades because you are entering in a better price than for me. Okay, If they are in green, I would say if they are still open, it's because there are room for a potential more gains. Okay. So at the end, uh, what I want is to have everybody in sync about what I'm doing. But I understand that question when other investors are doing buy and hold, you know, longer strategies, longer term strategies, and so on. And there is a kind of accumulation, uh, whatever. In my case, I, I prefer to have all people in, in sync and in the same boat like me in every moment. Well, the only thing I would say about that is in the same way as you are reaching out to Spanish speakers and English speakers, increasing your total addressable market, you can equally appeal to people who don't want to copy open trades. You could say, I recommend copying open trades, but if you don't copy open trades, you'll still be in sync with me in a matter of a couple of months? No, I would say in, a, in a three weeks. I mean, right. Well, then, so, so it's up to the top here. You know, you, I, 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 I take your idea. I, took, yes, yes, I would write it down. You're suitable for all. There's a welcome sign outside Jose's door for everyone. Copy open trades or not. You are right. You are right. Okay, let's talk about your overall results quickly. You've been on eToro since December of 2017. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about, before we get into your annual results, your first month, December 2017, over 42%. The next mm -hmm. two months, 48% and 35%. So let's start there. What on earth was going on back then? Okay, a small amount of it best of uh, in my account, okay, and having a lot of uh, risk. You know, when you have very small accounts, you can say, okay, I'm going to bet everything in this position, okay. So, as you can see, there is three very nice months, but they are not real. For that reason, I say that they started in March 2018. When I started to to apply a risk reward strategy more reasonable, it was when I joined the Popular Investor Program. 
as you can see from March 2018, you, you would see a more normal result, okay? There were more money in the account. I started to think in this project for my life and things started to, uh, to show more normal situation. First three months, I will not take into account as, as a reference. Well, it pleases me to see that you don't seek to emphasize in your bio statistics like lifetime returns or annualized returns, no. which would be heavily influenced by these early stats. That would be very misleading to potential copiers. And I'm sure, of course, no high profile PI would ever be so disingenuous as to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, anyway. but, but you know, colors. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad to see that you do you don't do that. So that's another tick in your honesty box. Okay, so that was 2017. 2018 was also inflated by those statistics, mm -hmm. and it shows 144%. 2019 minus 5.4. 2020 seven and a half. 2021 almost 30%. And 2022 currently five, just a little over five percent. Mm -hmm. We just mentioned some early months when you did extraordinarily well. There's another month that stands out to me, and that is uh, in the middle of 2020. You were having a rough run of results. You had seven red months out of eight, and then a spectacular 54% in September. Okay, uh, when I talked to you before about this spiral, that you need up and downs uh, in order to learn what uh, you are doing and that I do prefer a long-term process in obtaining these levels of, of popular investor. Uh, this was the key point in my life, in my trading life, in my public trading life, which was how to manage a very bad situation. No, I used to say that markets always are going to find you at home. I will keep you uh, in front of you. No? Everybody will suffer these kind of things. Okay, So there are two solutions to this. One is to understand what happened and try to fine-tune your strategy and try to come back with patience to the right way. And the other one is to be like a cowboy and to say, okay, double here, you know? And if things go well, perfect. And if not, okay, I will fire the, this account, okay? So it was a very tricky moment for me because it, it was a very stressful moment. And I say, okay, there is something very wrong here, okay? And I think it was related to risk management. I think that I was choosing too many risks for my profile. I think that every trader has his own risk frontier that uh, is the frontier from happy trading from, you know, death <laughs> or hell, <laughs> you know. And I found myself trading with very high levels of, of risk. And also, the second lesson was that when I go to the intraday staff, I used to fail. And it's very much stressful to go to intraday staff than to swing trading. All my attempts to be an intraday trader, I have failed, always. And I don't know no trader in the world that it's constant being an intraday trader. So. It happened in those days. So, as you can see, wow, wow. And then, you know, flying again. And I decided to go to the swing trading, a more relaxed frontier of risk three, let's say, three with picks four, but no more. I reached in those days, uh, you know, eight risk, you know. So it, that's crazy for me. So you mentioned your risk score there. Let's have a little look at what it looks like now, having spiked at eight away back then. 
Yes, you're pretty much average risk of three, maximum risk of four, with a few little ups and downs, but it's quite steady. Do you think that's fair? Yes. Yes. Uh, and again, this is my risk level. <laughs> this is the level in which I feel more comfortable managing my positions. And I think that as any person in the world has its own uh, risk adversion, all traders has its own risk frontiers. I explore myself and I find that being in these levels in the middle of the table, it's good for me. If I go upper, I don't say that I will do that never, but I will go there if I'm very confident of what I'm doing in that moment. Okay. But to tell you the truth, three is my level. And what does that mean in real terms? Leverage, you keep a lid on leverage and you maintain tight stop losses? It's everything and it's all all is related to exposure. If you can control your exposure and whatever your leverage is, I mean, I, I would say again, it's the same to, uh, to invest 5,000 per 10, like 2,500 per 20. I mean, it's, it's the same exposure. So you have to modulate your exposure, you know, the risk that you are exposing yourself uh, when you add all of your positions. So this is something that I monitor all the time. I always know I'm roughly in three or four. Uh, because it also depends about the volatility of the market. So if volatility increase, your exposure increase. Okay, if volatility decrease, uh, your exposure decrease as well. So it's something that uh, it is alive. So you have to monitor every day. Okay, copier numbers and assets under copy. As of the time of recording, your copier numbers are 6,488. And your assets under copy, I can only see 5 million plus currently. It's 9 million. 9.02. Very good. And your copier graph is a story of, well, a relatively steep rise. And then you've sort of continued more or less to, to work your way up. Slight decline in recent times, but nothing major. You must be delighted to be at this stage, at this level. Yes, I feel very happy to be here. But again, I want more. <laughs> but I want more in a good sense. I mean, if I get more, it's because I'm doing well. <laughs> so it is good for my savings as well. <laughs> so I want to be every day a better trader, not the best trader. Okay, a better trader. And it is because you learn from your mistakes, you admit them, is the first step, is to admit your mistakes, to analyze what has happened, and then try to take advantage of this introspective analysis. No? So my goal is always to be a better uh, trader, better than yesterday, but uh, not as good as tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, what you remind me of there is how I've been trying to get you on for many months and you've always been doing very well. And I thought, I'm never going to get Jose on. He's too busy. He's not going to come to Copy Traders Club. And then finally you said, yes, I've had a bad month. Maybe it is a good time to come on, which is yes. kind of counterintuitive. Tell me about that. When you reached me, it was through a social network. I remember that. I appreciate a lot your your work, and and I think you are the popular investor oracle because at the end, if you share your time with with all of us, at the end you are learning. I think you can learn from all of us. So you have the broad vision of the popular investor world. <laughs> so. Uh, I think that it is very easy uh, to say yes when you are like the Sputnik 
and it's difficult to say yes now when things go wrong. So um, the first time I told you that perhaps I need to consolidate my flight. And if I consolidate the numbers and so on, I will be very, very glad to, to, to be with you. But please leave me some months. And then when, when I reached the Black Star, my answer has been a very bad month. And you told me, when do you expect to, to be with me one day? And I said, perhaps this is a good moment because it's the, the right moment to, to show people that you are here. I think that communication is very important when, when things go well, but also when things go wrong and, and try to be sincere with yourself and with your copiers. Very good. Well, that brings us on to communication. Let's talk about that. You've got a YouTube channel, which has 12 videos. They include videos in Spanish and in English, explaining some of the principles that you adhere to, plus a one-hour strategy video, a quarterly report, and a webinar with Sam North and Camp Per Vans, mm. two great friends of the show. Yes, yes. But, uh, it was a very big pleasure to, to meet uh, James. We, we uh, joined uh, you know, a special webinar with Sam, and it was great to, to meet here. I think that he's doing very, very well. I'm sure that he would reach higher levels for sure. Uh, I think that we, we share, you know, visions about trading, you know, I think that he's doing correct heads and so on. So, okay, coming back to the issue, when you join the Popular Investor Program, it is supposed that you will contribute to, to the community. If you reach these elite levels or, or whatever, you find yourself more obliged to do so. So I really love to talk about my strategy. I, I mean, the things, well, the lessons that I, that I learned. I really love to talk about cycles, but I do not like to talk about what are going to do markets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because uh, I think that markets are a life and kicking animal, you know, <laughs> and every day it's changing. So if you are going to say, okay, next quarter is going to be very high and higher prices and so on, okay, it's just an opinion, but I don't like that. I'm trying to find my own way of generating contents in my profile. I, I fail. I feel that I fail for now because sometimes I went to cyclic theory, someday I go to the markets review and so on. The market review is not good for me because I'm trying to be very coherent. So if I say that oil is going to push higher because I think that is, it is bottoming or whatever, or the euro to US dollar or whatever, I, at the end, I felt myself that I have to take action in what I said. So sometimes I trade what I said, <laughs> and this is not good for me. Up to now, I haven't found the correct way to communicate to people in terms of contribution. I, I think that I communicate well because everybody can reach me. And if things go well, I talk about that. And if things go wrong, I also talk about that. But I didn't get the right way to help people to improve their skills or you know their knowledge for now. Yeah, I think it's difficult for someone who's essentially a currency trader because it strikes me that there's a limited amount, not only that you can tell people, but that people want to hear, really. I have a feeling that copiers who copy currency traders are less inclined to want to hear all that stuff than they would from a PI who is a macro investor or mm. you know, someone who's really clued up on the markets and is writing about the Fed, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, w even watching your videos on 
the theories that you adhere to. It's kind of quite impenetrable stuff, really. I mean, I get the basic idea of the cycles and you layer cycles upon cycles and you look for patterns. But beyond that, I'm not sure there's a huge demand for copiers to learn everything they can about J.M. Hurst. Yes. Um, cycle theory is complex. It's quite complex. I mean, although I try to show something very easy to understand, behind of that, there is a nightmare. <laughs> I spent many, many hours studying cycles, m many days, many months studying cycles. It's complex, but it is at the same time beautiful. Beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing, technical analysis that I ever see. Okay, That's beautiful because uh, we are talking the same language, which is market sentiment fluctuations, which means that there are up and downs, there are swings, there are people going very greedy or going very the opposite. I think that markets is like a, a nice dancing <laughs> of sentiment. Okay, So the most beautiful theory that made this vision for me is the cyclist theory. So at the end, I find it beautiful, <laughs> but hard to understand, hard to explain. The basic principles are very simple. But cyclicality is all around us. I mean, in human behavior, in, in number of wars all over the centuries, natural cycles, some very predictable, others not. It's beautiful science. Do you copy? Do you copy? Do you copy? Do you copy? Copy Traders Club. Copy Traders Club. Do you copy? Do you copy? Do you copy? Do you copy? Copy Traders Club. Copy Traders Club. So normally at this stage, Jose, I look at the guest's portfolio and I discuss asset class allocation. In your case, that's quite simple. You have six positions currently, all currency pairs. Yes. And that's you right. have a Sorry, and you have a cash position currently of a little over 22%. What's your normal cash position? Does that vary a lot? Mm, it depends on the opportunities. I mean, I, I would like to say two things. Okay, the first one is regarding to the asset allocation. Sometimes somebody asks me why you are trading Forex. And I say, because they fit better to my strategy. That's all. I like every kind of asset. I follow all assets. And I do have my own personal opinion about macro situation, always. Because uh, as you can remember, uh, I define myself as, a, as economist first. So I am really, truly interested in economics, in macro investing, in macro situation of all over the world. And I, I have my own criteria. But here on Itoro and in my trading account, we are talking about creating money, creating wealth. And I use the tools that best serve to this objective. Okay. So once I have decided the cyclical tool as the way of analyzing markets, once I define it, my risk strategy, exposure, and so on, then I took the best market tools to develop that strategy. And for me, are forex pairs. Why forex pairs? Because it's large liquidity, because it's large number of opening hours, avoiding daily gaps, and because they are like big boats. You know, we are talking about fluctuations around a underlying trend. So normally you will find a very stable underlying trend that lasts for months and you can find, you know, these oscillations around a uh, forest. For that reason, I use only forex. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I do not understand macro investing or my ideas about, about that. 
I see you mention elsewhere that you sometimes do also trade in U.S. indices, precious metals, and you own some Bitcoin in in real life. Yes, I I have my own holdings of Bitcoin because I'm a believer of Bitcoin. I'm very critical with current monetary situation, so I decided to take part of my savings in in Bitcoins, just like a security <laughs> stuff, you know. But I will not continue trading indexes or whatever because sometimes people get frustrated because they thought that they were investing in a forex uh, popular investor only and if you do that you are not following your main core strategy and so on so i have decided not to trade anything else more than forex pairs from now 80 percent of trades were forex but in the coming months we will get that to the 100 percent my cash position okay at the end, I'm monitoring all the major currency. I think I cover 25 pairs or something like that. And it depends on the opportunities. Sometimes I fully invested because all the, you know, the opportunities are covered. And sometimes you don't find that the conditions are good to enter in some positions. So I decide just way to, to new opportunities. That's all. It's just a question of market situation. In one of your videos, you explain all the cyclical analysis theories, and then you close with the warning that these should never be considered a buy or sell signal. So explain what else goes into your thought processes in addition to examining the cycles. When I talk about cyclic analysis, and I said my view that I'm using cyclic analysis, and techniques. These techniques are very important here because what I found very difficult in cycles is the way you trade cycles because uh, you have various cycle degrees from two-day cycle to 18-year cycle. I mean, there are, uh, hard to define it, 11 nominal cycles for five days up to 18 years. So... Trading, just thinking that something has bottomed or picked is very difficult and it's very tricky because you may uh, find yourself selling or buying something that have stopped to fall or to, to going up, okay? So I introduced the concept of techniques, the cyclic techniques to enter a market. What I use mostly is the future line of demarcation, is the FLD, who define it Harst as a tool, and it is very interesting. So I uh, developed my own entry system that I use for entering a trade. Normally, when I do a trade that don't follow that technique, I normally fail. <laughs> So I must to stick myself to this technique, and I love that. Okay, but uh, and this is part that I not mention too much. Okay, well, perhaps you can explain some of your thinking behind entering into and possibly exiting from some of your existing positions. Tell us, you've got a sell position on USD CAD. Talk us through that. I have been following this pair for, for several weeks because I was, I'm still thinking that uh, this pair is peaking and it is forming a major peak. Okay. So I think that this pair will go down for some time. And I was trying to pick this peak. <laughs> and I have tried several times and I failed because I find myself trying to pick without my entry signal saying, okay, right now. <laughs> so and this is my fault last month, one of my faults. And right now we are, I'm having the first, uh, the first uh, things that it is picking and probably it is going 
for for many 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 weeks and the selling pressure you similarly have a sell position on gbp cad yes probably perhaps we we can think that we have a dual vision over there but uh, at the end forest pair is something between two <laughs> the one currency in relation to another in this case i think that uh, Canadian dollar is going to be more stable, or perhaps to appreciate a, lot, uh, a little bit. And the uh, the cable, uh, I think that will will continue with pressures, down pressures. So at the end, I trade what I believe from my cyclic analysis. Okay. And sometimes somebody said, wow, what, what are you selling the US to Canadian dollar because the dollar is very strong. I don't know, but I think it is speaking. Uh, normally, sentiment come first, the, a peak or a bottom come first, and then fundamentals came later. You know, It's my position that sometimes technical analysis uh, allow you to think about something is changing. Are things changing with the Japanese yen, given recent news? I think that uh, Japanese yen is speaking. O sea, it's bottoming, you know, the, the depreciation that it's having. But it will not change in its trend. I think that it's more a consolidation area. I think that uh, it will, you know, rebound for, for some time. But... I don't see a change in, in its trend, a dramatic change. I mean, I think that it will appreciate a little bit in the next weeks or months. And you've got buy positions on Aussie dollar and the Japanese yen and the New Zealand dollar and Japanese yen. Yes. Again, it is due to my cyclical analysis and not due to what I think about the dollar, the Aussie. Yes, I follow also the futures for the Aussie, the future for the cable, the futures for for the US dollar, the the Japanese gen futures and so on. And it can bring me the the big picture of these currencies. Okay. At the end, we can conform a fundamental matches, but I don't care about that. I mean, I prefer. To, to do a trade and let's see if, if, if it is going in my site or not. <laughs> okay, can we talk just a moment about how you probably saw that in previous times there was a very high profile currency trader, popular investor, Black Star, who is now gone. So you're not unlike the guy I'm referring to and many other eToro Forex PIs using a version of Martingale or a loss chasing grid system where you keep increasing your stake until it turns from red to green. Just to be clear, you don't do anything like that. No, that all. But that's something you've seen happening on the platform? Difficult to say. I mean, every trader has its own book, handbook, and it's its own style. I prefer to talk about my style and not to talk about others' styles. <laughs> I follow every popular investor I see because the only thing that I have to do so is to learn from them. So I love to, to know what they are doing, what they contribute to the community and the styles and, and so on. Unfortunately, I think that Many people are in the same style, and I think that there are very different styles in the investing world. And perhaps there are a lot of uh, many people doing the same thing. And diversity is very nice. Okay, here's another softball question, as they say in America. You don't seem to be a guy who's very keen to be green every month. I like to be green every month, but I think that it is a consequence of being a better trader every month. You know, 
I have been involved in five startups in my life. When somebody asks me, why are you suffering <laughs> this startup? And I say, because we want to do something different. I love what we are trying to do. And if we love what we try to do and do it in the correct way and in an excellent way, then money will come. Okay. So I prefer to talk about how to be a better trader instead of how to be more green. <laughs> If you are a better trader, results will come later on. And if results will come then, later on, your pe uh, popular investor uh, star will grow as well. So I not want to be very concentrated in being a black star. I prefer to be a better trader. That's all. Uh, so, And I have to, uh, to say that this was something that managed my life three, three years ago when I said, I want to be a black star. <laughs> I want to be a black star. So, but I didn't take care of how to be a black star. <laughs> so, so I prefer to talk always in how to be improving your style, your training. Let's talk about copiers. Who should copy Jose? I think that anybody can, can find a, a reason to copy me. The first thing that I recommend is to diversify to people. Okay. And I will not be asking anybody to copy me with everything in his account or her account. I will suggest to diversify. If so, I think that I'm a good opportunity to diversify because I trade forest, because I trade differently, because I trade in a different time frame, because I trade with a reasonable risk. So I don't find any issue to copy me. Here's a question that sounds a little bit rude, Jose, but it's not. What makes you so special? It's, I think that it is not special. I think it's a kind of diversity or different. What I'm different, because I find myself different in what I envision about investing. And this is something that I then learned when I was in a bank, in the trading desk. And I realized that all the retail staff will continue the same, which is large file, doing very large time uh, whole, uh, buy and hold strategies and so on. And when I was in the bank, we were trying to beat the market every month. I mean, um, we do short-term investing. Where is the, where the money is, uh, the truly money. So I'm not special at just doing something that I believe. And when I find that, that idea, then I have study, find the tools to try to do so. For that reason, I discovered cycles. For that reason, I started to think about swing trading. For that reason, I started to think in, in absolute return strategy. For that reason, I started to think about how to control risk and exposure. For that reason, I started to think about how much it's reasonable to expect when you do trading. Sometimes when I feel people that say, you can double your money in two months, you're crazy. That doesn't exist <laughs> in the real world. I mean, we are here to try to, to reach 15 to 20% each year because we are risking three. Okay? If you are going to six level, you will expect 50% or 40, let's say. So I think that no special, just doing things in a different way. That's all. 
Okay, what changes would you like to see on eToro? Difficult to say. I have a duality regarding to exposure here. I think eToro is very disrupting because since eToro you can put a face in 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 behind a strategy, a face, a person, a human being that is doing his best or her best. So I think that's very, very positive. But also, social networks can be very, very rough, you know? I used to say that if you are doing very well, too many roses are very bad. But if you are doing wrongly, too many darts are also very difficult to manage. So I prefer to, to have a stable line, you know, uh, that everybody can understand your 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 fails, that it is not a straight line uh, business. There are up and downs. There are you will face in, you will be facing problems, moments of very bad results. So I have a dual interpretation about to have that kind of exposure to everybody. But at the end, I think that I wouldn't change too much things on it. Or I think that they have proved that they are. Improve, they are creating a big uh, investing community. Yeah, I think that's a skill that PIs have to develop, especially the higher up the ladder you go, is that the negative feedback, the, the nasty comments, the abuse, it has to affect you less and less with more experience. Yes, uh, I would say that it. Uh, in the early stages of being a popular investor affect more than right now. Mm -hmm. um, and because I know what I'm doing. Because I know what I'm doing, you can choose me or not, but you cannot say that I'm not coherent of what I'm saying. Okay, So for me, coherency is the most powerful tool to be in front of your copiers and to say, I do this, and I will continue to do this. And is this is the way that I do this. And then, if you commit some mistakes, to have the opportunity to explain your, and to say, okay, sorry, I, I did this mistake, and I find it, this mistake, and I will fix this mistake. So if you do that, I think that you will fly better across this social nightmare that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's very easy for bad people to say you are a disgusting popular investor because I don't like you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on a more personal level, then let's talk about relationships. What other popular investor do you know best personally? Uh, I will mention two people. Uh, the first one was Omar. It's uh, Omar. We did this roadshow together with Tali Salamon, uh, Luis Ramirez, and Javier Molina. And it was a very young investor, uh, a very nice guy. And he reached the, the green star, but uh, he has lost it. Is this Omar Sosa Afonso? Sí. Yes, I think so. Username Omar Etza. Yes, that's right. He was he was a green star. Uh, I think that right now he's champion. Yeah. And I think that he was doing very very well, but at the end, I think uh, he was mixing his life uh, with investing and other professional ideas and so on. So. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I met him and I really like uh, his humanity. <laughs> very, very nice guy. And the other one is uh, Copper Barnes, James, which I met him in a webinar. I hadn't the opportunity to go to, to the UK to the last Popular Investor Summit. I'm sorry about that because I wanted to, to know personally my colleagues. I hope that the next time I will be there in order to share ideas with other colleagues. But unfortunately, I don't have too many more connections through popular investors. You, <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Okay, Jose, final question. Tell me. What's the one question that I didn't ask you that you wanted me to ask you? Are you happy doing what you do? Consider that question asked. Okay, yes, I'm very happy. You know, sometimes when you find yourself just, you are opening a door in a room, no? And you don't know exactly what are you going to find inside the room. But there is a lot of light th uh, coming through the, you know, to, the, to this door, no? So I, I think that I'm entering in a room with a lot of light and because I'm doing what I love, which is having a business because at the end, Popular Investor Program is a personal business, of course. Uh, there are money to, to earn if you do things correctly. But also, I love markets and the way they behave. So some minutes ago, I told you about the beautiful of the markets. You know, this when uh, right now they are not beautiful, okay? <laughs> but but when they move in sync and and you know everything is more a little bit more predictable, they are very 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 fascinating behaviors. No? So I'm very happy right now because I'm reaching uh, I'm 54 right now. I, I think that I have the correct moment instead of equilibrium to affront this uh, this startup or this popular investor project. And I will say that I'm very happy to be a popular investor and to be here as well. Even <laughs> finally. Very good. Well, you heard it here first, listener. Here's Jose, 54, and dancing with the markets in a room full of light. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that sounds very, very nice. Well, that's a lovely picture you paint for the listener, Jose. Thank you so much for coming by the Copy Traders Clubhouse and talking to us. It has been a real pleasure, and I'm very pleased to meet you. Maravilloso it was to talk to Jose. Whether his star is black or green, it seems to me like he will be a significant PI for many years and will have no shortage of dance partners. We look forward to seeing how he gets on in the future and whether the virtuous cycle he is now in continues. That's all from me. See you on Discord and Facebook. Until next time we meet at Copy Traders Club, I wish you many happy returns. Obviously, anything you hear in this podcast is for entertainment only, no financial advice. Do your own research. This is just generic chit chat. We don't know your individual circumstances, etc., etc., and so forth.